Hey everybody, I Subby here for the School Network, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial to make your voice go from this to something a little bit like this. Here we're going to learn how to make and amplify your voice into something a little bit more soothing and give it a little bit more oomph so that when you're broadcasting on the Freedom Network or on your own channel, you can go ahead and just sound fantastic doing it. So here's what we're going to do. You need two programs. One is a free program. I'll provide the link and show you how to install it. It's very, very simple. The second one, you're going to have to pay for it. It's Adobe Audition, but it's a program well worth it because it's going to make your voice sound just spectacular and it's going to help give it that extra drive that you're looking for to bring everything home when you're recording. So once you have Adobe Audition, what I'm going to need you to do is actually start up the program. Okay. And when that started, it's going to look a little bit different like than this. This is going to look a little bit more, and this is how your program is going to look, but just not yet. So right now we're going to go ahead and minimize it, and we're going to go to our web page. All right, and now our web page is going to be this long thing up here. But don't worry, I'm going to have the link in the description. We're not even going to try and go through this entire entirely long link because it's just not worth it. The link's down there, click the link, and you'll be right here. All right, so the program is VB Audio Virtual Cable, and what this does is it allows you to emulate a mixer, okay? And that's what we need with, in conjunction with Adobe Audition, and it's going to let our voices sound exactly like this. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click download, you're gonna download it, and you're gonna get a zip file. Now, if you don't know how to do it, uh, open a zip file, I'm going to ask you to try to look it up on another tutorial. Probably that school will have up. Anthony, I'm sure, is working diligently to get a, a, a zip file open uh, tutorial up. But until then, what you're going to do is you're going to open it, you're going to extract it to a folder, and then it's going to look a little bit something like this. So we're going to open up the folder. The folder is going to open. You have all your contents in it. Okay, once you have all your contents in it, you're going to go ahead and click the setup that's most configured for you. Now, what if you don't know if you have a 64-bit machine or a 32-bit machine? Yikes. Most of us nowadays have 64-bit machines, but just to play it on the safe side, here's how you find out. Now, I'm in Windows 8.1, so it's going to be a little different, but if you go ahead and bring up a... Windows Explorer like this, you go to, let's see here, this PC, right click, go to properties, you're going to see system type, and that's going to say 64-bit operating system, or it's going to say 32-bit operating system. Now again, this is Windows 8, it's going to be different than Windows 7, but all you got to do is right click on my computer which should be on your desktop if you have anything lower than Windows 8.1 or 8. And that's how you're going to do it. So then you, this comes up, the system information, it's going to tell you right here, system type 6432. Now I have a 64-bit processor, so I need to run the 64-bit setup. Now, before you double-click it, you actually have to run it a specific way. So what you're going to do is you're going to right-click, you're going to click Run as Administrator. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to actually run this program as an administrator on your computer. And without getting into a bunch of technical jargon, it basically gives it total permission over your computer to install wherever it needs to. And it needs to have that permission because it needs to install into a Windows folder so that you can have a voice that sounds like this. All right, so this is exactly how it's going to look. In fact, I'm not quite sure why it says install driver for me. It should already have my driver installed, but nonetheless, you're just gonna go ahead and click install driver. It's going to say restart now, restart later, restart now, restart your computer. I already have the driver installed. I don't need to restart, so we're gonna restart later. All right, then it's gonna say installation complete, successful, you may need to reboot. Obviously, it wanted us to reboot. We're not going to, because I don't need to. 
and we're back so now what we're gonna need you to do is now that we finish installing the virtual microphone is we're going to actually need to bring up Adobe audition once more now that we got Adobe audition up again yours is not gonna look like mine but I'm gonna help you make it look like mine so we're gonna go ahead and select file new multi-track session okay then this is gonna pop up it's gonna look almost identical but it's not gonna have the wavy lines like mine does okay we have to set it up so that it has wavy lines and levels and everything else just like mine so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna go to track one we're gonna click it and then we're going to go to edit preferences and we're gonna go to audio hardware now when we have audio hardware up, we're going to make sure device class is MME. We're going to make sure the default input is microphone. Now this is going to be the microphone that you want to use to input sound. I recommend that you use a good microphone. Yetis are blue Yetis is a great microphone. It works perfect for me, but you might find that a different microphone works better for you. So again, you're going to select the microphone that you want to have sound go through to your computer. Default output is going to be cable input VB audio virtual cable. And that's what you're going to do. All right, you're going to select that. That is your virtual microphone, and that's going to make it sound fantastic. Okay. Next, we're going to have to select master clock. Uh, it's going to say out cable input VB audio virtual cable. This should be selected automatically, but if it's not, make sure you select it. Now, this is the next one, latency 100 milliseconds. Normally with me, latency and most normal people are going to have 100 milliseconds. It's going to be perfectly fine for them. You may have to increase it if you have a, a slower computer or you may be able to decrease it if you have a faster computer. But I find that 100 milliseconds is usually default for about everybody. So unless you have one freakish computer that is weird and it sounds just completely wrong on 100 milliseconds, then, you know, you might have to switch the latency. But normally 100 milliseconds is perfectly fine. Then sample rate is always going to be different depending on what type of microphone you're using and the hardware and your computer and everything else. So mine's 44100, yours might be 44100, it might be 4800, it might be something completely different. This is going to be selected by the machine itself, that's why use machine specific device defaults is checkmarked. That could be a song. Use machine specific device defaults. Alright. This is not an audition, Keith. Not an audition. Alright. Use machine specific device defaults and then go ahead and click OK. That's going to go ahead and set up your hardware for this so that we know to input and output. Next, you're going to want to make sure that the microphone is live. And what I mean by live is that it's that it's outputting live. Now you can have it record. That's no problem. But you want it to, to output and play live so that it's a seamless transition from you talking to it actually enhancing your voice. So to do that, you're going to click this R button, which is arm for record, and then monitor input is I. So this is going to turn red, this is going to turn orange, and, it's, and you're going to see levels right here and probably right here as well. Okay. Now we're going to also select right here the input and again we're selecting our microphone that we want the sound to come in and we're only doing this because this way it doesn't have to go through windows it's just going to make it a faster transition so again select your microphone for me it's the blue yeti and then again your output is going to be the cable input vb audio virtual cable so again make sure these are selected and you're done with this part this this part right here is all set that's it. Now, we have to add effects. Otherwise, your voice is just going to sound normal. But we want it to sound fantastic. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to select single band compressor. All right. And that's over here. You click the arrow. You go to amplitude and compression. And you're going to click single band compressor. All right. That will bring up this window. 
And here are my settings. Go ahead and pause the video for a second so you can write down and, and set up your settings just like mine. Again, you may need to tweak these to make your voice sound even better than mine, but these are the default settings I use and I find that they actually work for pretty much any microphone ever. All right, so first one is threshold and that's negative 25 decibels. The next one is ratio and that's 2.0 by one. Attack is zero milliseconds. Release is gonna be 200 milliseconds. And output gain is gonna be 12 decibels. Once you have all that, go ahead and click the X and we're gonna move on to chorus. Chorus can be found by clicking the arrow and going to modulation, chorus. Once you click on that, it's gonna bring up this. Now there's a lot of settings in here, but a lot of them are gonna stay default. So go ahead and pause the video at this time. Go ahead and write down these settings or set yours to these settings and go ahead and unpause it. And we're gonna go through each one of these step by step. So the first one is gonna be voices two. You're gonna to wanna to set it to two voices. Obviously you don't have two voices, but there's a reason for that. So don't worry. Delay time is gonna be 0.4 milliseconds. Just go ahead and click on this 0.4 and, or whatever it is for you, it's probably gonna be zero. Just click on it and go ahead and set it to 0.4. Delay rate is 0.1 Hertz. And again, you're not gonna be able to use the slider for these two. Just go ahead and click it and set it to 0.1. Feedback is 0% because obviously you don't want any feedback. Spread is gonna be 21 milliseconds. Modulation depth is gonna be zero decibels. Modulation rate is gonna be 0.6 Hertz. Again, please just click the number right here. You're not gonna be able to get the slider to 0.6. It's just not gonna happen. And if you do get it to 0.6, you are a superstar. So stereo width, you're going to make sure that these two boxes are unchecked, okay? You do not want these checked. If they're checked, uncheck them. If they're not checked, leave them. Stereo field is gonna be at 100%. Output level, dry is gonna be at 176.2%, and wet is gonna be at 13.1%. That's it for this. Once you have this completed, go ahead and exit out, and we're gonna go to the next one, which is adaptive noise reduction. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and click this little arrow. We're gonna go to noise reduction and restoration, and we're gonna click adaptive noise reduction. This window is gonna pop up, and again, here are the settings. Go ahead and pause the video at this time and set your settings to these. Reduce noise by 30 decibels. Noise, noisiness is going to be 30%. Fine tune noise floor is gonna be 7.83 decibels. Signal threshold is gonna be 9.59 decibels. Spectral decay rate is going to be 284.65 milliseconds divided by 60 decibels. And broadband preservation is gonna be 194.70 Hertz. Again, you can simply edit these numbers by just clicking on them and typing it with the numbers. Makes it a lot easier than trying to set the actual slider to them. Also make sure high quality mode is checkmarked and go ahead and click the X. Next up is Amplify. So if you actually have a microphone that might be a little bit more qu on the quietest side, you're gonna to wanna to amplify. Or maybe you have a voice that just, maybe you're just a little bit on the quiet side. You're not as boisterous as me. So what you're gonna to wanna to do, click the little arrow, go to Amplitude and Compression, click Amplify, and you'll be greeted by this screen right here. Very simple, small screen. What you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure both of these numbers stay the same at all times. Now, link sliders, is checkmarked by default, but you can edit these numbers to be different numbers. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you go ahead and keep these numbers the same at all times. Otherwise, one of your speakers is gonna be lower than the other one, and it's gonna sound weird when you're broadcasting. So make sure that these stay the same. Now, if you raise the number to a plus number, it's going to go ahead and amplify your voice and make it louder. If you bring it down to a negative number, it's going to reduce the sound of your voice. I find that the Blue Yeti and my voice, I don't need to amplify it and I don't need to de-amplify it. So I just, I leave that as a grayed out thing. I don't touch it, but it's there in case I need it. In case I switch microphones and maybe my next microphone is quiet. I doubt it. All right, so go ahead and close that out when you're done. Okay, and the last effect that we need to set up today is multi-band compressor. That can be found by clicking the arrow here, going to amplitude and compression, and clicking multi-band compressor. This is gonna bring up the most confusing screen of them all, but I promise you, it's easy. Don't worry. So, go up to here, click presets, 
go ahead and click enhance lows. That's gonna be perfectly good for default preset. You can then decide what you wanna do down here, change what numbers, up, down, left, right, all sorts of different things. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow you to find the perfect pitch for your voice. Again, this isn't something that's going to take a few minutes to set up. It's probably going to take a few hours to get that perfect voice, but for a default better voice, this is what you want. Just So just click presets, enhance lows. And that's gonna make your voice sound a thousand times better, I promise you. All right, so when you're done here, click the X, and you have successfully set up Adobe Audition. Now, all you have to do is when you have a program like XSplit or something like that, you just have to go to the settings, and your microphone is now going to be that output. So remember when we set up the output right here for cable input? That's going to be your input for your for your new for your recording software. So if you use XSplit. Just set your, your microphone to this cable input. If you use fraps, just make sure you set your microphone to this cable input. And that's gonna make your voice sound perfect when recording. And you're gonna thank me, and you're gonna thank Anthony, but most of all, you're gonna thank yourself for sounding so darn good. All right, that's all the time I got today to, to help you make your voice sound even better. Hopefully I'll be making more. If you like this video, leave a comment in, in, down below. Let me know you liked it. Hit the like button, do something, shout it from the rooftop, make a song, sing it on YouTube, and I'll catch you next time for the next time where I help you sound or look better during your broadcast here on the School Network. See you guys later. How to play to your strengths here on YouTube. That and more in this episode. Is there a proper way to do tags here on YouTube? That and more in today's episode.